Hey guys, it's Elena. Today we're going to be doing a quick little project where we will be adding pressed flowers as embellishments to a letter in the Procreate app. And I will be showing this using my pressed flowers brush set, which is available for purchase and the link in the description. And I wanted to show you how you can add flowers around this letter and make it look like they are growing up with leaves and stems as sort of a embellishment collage around a letter. And you can use this for a lot of different projects and procreate, so I'm really excited to show this to you. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting out a new canvas with the plus icon, we are going to go with a 10 by eight, or sorry, eight by 10 inch canvas at 300 DPI. And we are going to go to the gear icon, add, add text. So we're going to make a letter and I chose a capital letter L. I think I was thinking of the word lovely, but didn't end up actually writing the word out. But anyway, I'm highlighting that text and choosing a different font. You can choose any font that you want, but I'm choosing DM Serif Display, which is a font that I have installed on my iPad and it's free. So I'll put it, the link in the description to that Google font. Um, and so now I'm highlighting that and choosing a very, very light pink color as the color of my L. And I saw that it wasn't really filling the page, so I'm making it a bit bigger with the arrow icon. And so now I have added a layer and I've put it above the L and I'm renaming that layer to flowers. So in this layer, we are going to add the flower embellishments and we wanna make sure that the L is still independent from the flowers. So we are using my Build a Flower brush set and the link for this is in the description. We're going to start out with the stamps. So I'm kind of scrolling through the stamps and choosing a forget me not and choosing a blue color. And with that, I'm just going to change the size up a little bit and add a couple of these all on the same layer. So I'm changing the size up a bit and I'm going over to forget me not number two, which is very similar, but it just has a different look to it so that this can be a bit more organic looking with a couple of different looking forget me not so they don't seem like stamps. So I've added a couple of those in. I'm going up to my colors, choosing a different blue color and I am scrolling down to a different stamp now. And I'm choosing pansy number five. So I'm using the pen to choose where the tilt is going and I decided that I wanted it to be purple. So I'm tilting the pen a little bit to have it sort of facing up in the corner. So now I've got a purple pansy and I wanted to choose a different color, pink, and a different size and add another pansy down here with the same stamp. So I'm continuing with a red pansy and I decided to change to pansy number seven and have that kind of peeking up over the top of the L. So I've chosen pansy number nine. So I just kind of wanted to have a couple of brightly colored pansies on here. So I've chosen a green color and I'm figuring out where I want this and tilting my pen in order to decide which way it's going to go. Now I've gone back to a purple or actually a red And continuing with the pansies, I'm going with pansy number 11, adding that one. I wanted something orange, so with the same, actually I'm changing, I chose an orange color and now I'm changing to pansy number 10 and adding that one up in the corner. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm just adding different flower stamps in different colors and I will be adding the greenery and the stems and all of that later. But for now, what I'm just doing is I'm adding the flowers first and just kind of not putting them directly on the L, but kind of putting them around and I'm kind of envisioning how the vines of the flowers are going to kind of go up decoratively around this L. So I'm switching to poppies now, poppy number three, and I'm choosing a red color because usually they are red. Adding that one, again, tilting the pen so that 
it comes out of the top of the pen, just like a flower sprouting out of the pen. So now I've decided to add some dynamic flower heads as well. So I've chosen petals number four from the dynamic section at the beginning of the brush set. And I'm choosing a dark pink color for that. And I'm going in a little circle up in the corner. But I just decided to redo that. And I decided to do the same flower down at the towards the bottom in yellow. Again, making a very small circle and the flower head comes out from that. So now choosing Sweet Pea number two, I'm going to choose a primary and a secondary color. So I've chosen the orange as the primary and then the yellow was still chosen as the secondary. And I've made a very small half circle down here so that we have kind of a side flower and over to the side doing the same thing, a little side flower with half a circle. So now I think I have enough flowers. I've chosen Sepal, Sepal number one and a green color. And I'm going to add the little bit of green that comes up to the flowers. And I'm not doing this on every flower. I'm just kind of trying to see where it makes the most sense. So on the side flowers, like the poppy and the sweet pea, it makes a lot of sense to have these green bits coming up. And I'm adding them on some of the pansies as well. And this is just sort of the connecting bit between the stem and the flower so that it looks more realistic than just having a stem connecting there. So going back to the brushes, I'm choosing stem number one. I haven't changed the color. I still have the same green color chosen and I'm going to start experimenting with having these curly decorative sort of stems coming around to each flower. And this is not going to be realistic in that all of these flowers would obviously not be growing out of the same plant. So I'm not trying to make it look realistic, but I'm, I'm trying to make it look sort of like I had uh, a collage of different flowers, different pressed flowers, and kind of put them all together to decorate this L. So I'm just kind of letting the stem kind of grow into each flower. And at this point I thought that it might make more sense to come down from the flower instead of from the stem in order to ensure that there is a smooth transition from flower to stem. At this point all of the stems are going to be in front of the L and at a later point we will erase some of that so that it looks like it's in an intertwined with the L. But at this time I'm just adding stems to everything. So at this point I decided to add a few extra curly cues with kind of a light touch coming out of these stems and not for any particular reason it just seemed like that might look good and I might have gone a bit overboard with them to be honest but anyway it was fun. So this is still that stem number one brush, I haven't changed the brush. So at this point I decided to go ahead and use the eraser tool. So I'm selecting the eraser tool up here at the top and going to the airbrushing folder which is a default folder and the medium hard brush from that folder. So we're just going to use the default airbrushing brush under the eraser tool in order to take 
some of these stems away and I'm just kind of very carefully erasing the stem so that it looks like the plant is coming up behind the L. And I'm not going to do this everywhere, but I'm just going to do it in a couple of places. Like here, I wasn't really happy with how the stems were connecting anyway, so I'm erasing this bit here, but I'm going to leave the stem that is right above it so that it's kind of looking intertwined. And I had a bit of trouble here deciding what to do because I needed to actually erase some of the flower at the top, but ultimately I decided to just go ahead and erase this entire stretch of stem and also some of the flower at the top so that it would look like this flower is kind of peeking up over the L. But I feel like it's important to do all the stems beforehand um, in order to have it be logical with the connections and all that because you can still see that there's a stem going up in this direction but it looks like it's on the other side now and ultimately I did decide to get rid of this whole bundle right here which does mean erasing one of the flowers but it just seemed like the right thing to do So at this point it seemed like I had erased enough, there was some in front and some behind. So I went back to the brush tool and in my build a flower folder I decided to go with leaf number one and I still have this green selected, the same green that I used for the stems. And I'm using the leaf brush to add leaves to these stems here. So I'm using a small flicking motion that kind of loses pressure at the top and that's how we get this taper. And the smaller leaves are the ones where I have not used as much pressure and the bigger ones are where I'm pressing harder. And again, these are not really correct as far as like this is not a plant that would grow anywhere in nature, but I'm viewing it as a collage. So it doesn't have to make sense as something that would grow because that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to decorate an L with pressed flowers. So I'm kind of imagining that I have this box of pressed flowers next to me and that I'm kind of choosing elements out of that box and then gluing them onto this page as part of the collage. So going back to the brushes, I'm choosing stem number three in more of a greenish blue color. And I decided to add just a few more curly cues in this other color, maybe just to try and make it more interesting so that we have some different greens. And going back, I might have decided to use different greens all throughout, but that is maybe a project or an improvement for another day. Going back to my brushes, I'm going to choose leaf number five and in this greenish blue color I'm just adding a few leaves in this color as well with a different leaf brush for a variety. But I'm trying not to go overboard with the leaves because I am aware that it, it can detract from the flowers if, if I go too over, overboard with the leaves. So I want to complement the flowers rather than completely overpowering them. So that concludes our little tutorial and you could use this for a lot of different contexts. You could use different fonts and words. You could use a name. You could create a poster or you could make an invitation. So hopefully there are a lot of ways to use this idea. It doesn't even have to be a letter. It could be anything else. And so I just wanted to kind of illustrate how you can use these brushes to create a collage that embellishes a letter or anything else that you want to embellish. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.